Hey guys, how's it going? Got this old mower deck sitting here. I've had this around the shop now for a couple of years. I had somebody ask me about how to change out the spindle bearings in one of these John Deere mower decks. This is off of a 100 series. I believe it came off my 71 110. I thought I would do a video on how to change out these spindle bearings and put new bearings in them, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> blades are actually in pretty good shape. Just kind of looking this deck over, it's actually not in that bad a shape at all. I'm noticing a crack right there, and there's a crack right there, which, yeah, we might want to just swap this. We might just want to swap this shell. I have another shell, however, we could do that, so. I want to get the bearings changed out in the spindles and then we're going to swap everything from this deck over to another deck, I guess, and it will be a full on, full on change out apparently. So yeah, I want to go on ahead and make sure that these are tight, that way it makes it easier to get the pulleys off, or the, yeah, the pulleys off of the shafts. Now if we wanted to, we could take and loosen these nuts on here and get it out that way, but usually those don't come out very easily. That's why I'm not really excited to have to change out this deck, or move these spindles. Yeah, you can see these all have play in them, except for that one. So all the bearings are shot and that washer's no good. That one spins on its own, the nuts loose. I got a couple more decks I gotta do, but I figured that's loosening stupid. <clears throat> I figured why not make a video on changing these out, because I don't think there's very many videos out there to begin with on these old characters. I think I'm one of the only well there's a few, but I'm one of the only channels that fully covers these. Well plus other things. Not just these. But they do turn. It's just you can... I'm sure you hear it. And how hard it is to... It takes some effort to get that moving. So those spindles are pretty rough. They won't come back. Hopefully you now. But this is the nut right here. And then the... take the nut to the end of the threaded shaft and then this pulley I'm not going to reuse so I don't really care you know what happens to it well guess what I don't care because this is loose. shaking that camera too much. And 
then come in here with a punch and a mallet, beat that down. Let's see if this one goes. See that disintegrate. So yeah, that's a good shot. And it did come down. Hopefully we didn't screw that spindle up. If we didn't, we'll get it off. And then inside of here there's gonna be a key. Sometimes they're easy, other times they're not. There it goes. There it goes. See? Junk. Oh, cool, you see. <clears throat> and then right there's your key. You gotta take that key out in order to get this out. So, you know what that means. Eat it. And try not to damage that because you are going to be reusing it, that spindle. Some people will reuse the blades, some people won't. I will because they're in pretty good shape. But yeah, there's your spindle. And then I gotta do that now three more times. So let's see how much fun these bearings are to get out of this housing or these spindles. Hopefully it shouldn't be too hard. I wouldn't think. Just gotta get a bite on that spacer. There's a spacer in there and then below that's the bearing and then the bearing up here. There was a clip on them, but I think it was on one side. There is a holding. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I think it's what we're fighting right now, actually. I thought it was on the other side. Unless there was two. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's the best part of the bearing. Okay. I was going to say I didn't think there was another holder on that side. I thought it was just on this side. So now the fun part of getting this out.
there's a spacer. Yeah. There's the inner ring of the bearing. Did the bearing fall out? I think it did. Yeah, it did. It fell apart into a bunch of pieces, and there's one of the balls. There's a ring that goes all the way around the outside, or there should be. Whether it's still in there or not, yeah, I see it. I was going to say, I don't know whether it's still in there or not. Sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not. thought I saw it. That's it right there. Unless there's not a ring in here anymore, it was pulled out. Just got to find it now. I want to say that's the beginning of it right there. Somebody already pulled it out.
So let's see about getting this figured out. I want to take these and get them tapped. I have to tap right there. Bear with me while I get that. And, uh, take our tap food. I hate to do that, but I might just have to close it on these. Not on the threads, but just on the spindle. That way we can get into it, not too tight. There we go. Not cutting new threads, so it shouldn't go in too hard. You're just trying to get all the dirt and whatever else that might be in there out. That's the first one done, and then we'll do the second one, and we'll go through the third one. Now they might go in starting a little hard because we clamped on the end of this earlier when I went over it with the scotch bright and cleaned up the spindle. So that's, I believe that's why they're going in a little hard. They're starting a little hard, but for the most part, we're in new territory, so I'm gonna back out. But for the most part, they're going in pretty well. Hopefully that last one goes as easy. There we go. There we go. Try to keep it straight. There we go. You see now we're in where we need to be. There we go. It's still going to fight against the little lip up there, but once you get past a certain point, it goes in easier. Now we're hitting on the vise, so we back out. Yeah, see now coming out, it's going to come out easy. There we go. All three of the spindles are done. So I'm just going to take them up front and blow them out with the air compressor. I'm not going to film that. I'm just going to stick a nozzle in there and blow that out. Then with the other three. And then once we do that, we'll get in there and finish. So let's go on ahead and get this deck put together. I already pulled everything off of the old deck shell. So therefore, there's nothing on that shell anymore that we need. Everything is over here and ready to go on this shell. I also cleaned up these J hooks, so those will hopefully be all good. I didn't do anything on here. I probably should, but eh. I'm just go on ahead and start piecing it back together.
getting back into this project, probably about eight months later, this is that mower deck that we started on. We were gonna change the bearings and some other things out in it. We took it apart, but we kind of stopped. I had some other things pop up and didn't really have the time to get back into it. So now, so this side is the side that we want. Because the other side, it goes down into the deck. Come on. This side up here, the pulley goes on. This side down here goes under the shell. And that's where the pulleys mount to. I went ahead and just got new bolts because, well, may as well, and the other ones were in rough shape, so. I'm gonna tighten them a little bit. They are the size they needed, though. What the hell, I got them fit at the place. That one went in. Yeah, this out just a little bit. Be careful doing that. You don't want to screw up your threads. I really don't want to drill these out. Because if I drill them out, then I'm going to ruin the inside. see what happened. I guess we're going to have to drill that side out. So in the process we're trying to be careful. I don't want to ruin the square. But I want to get rid of that edge which I think I did. There we go. I'm not sure what would have caused that. I'm assuming just wear over the years. I'm going to take these over there on that table since that table is a little more secure and I'm going to knock these in and I'm going to do these other two also. Once I do those other two, I'll bring you guys back. I figured I might as well just film this because why not? pushes the square into here. You want to be careful though not to bust this up because this is cast iron. Cast iron is kind of brittle. And they're going in tight so that should hold them in good. And these housings are about a hundred bucks a piece so and of course I left almost off one of them at the store when I was getting bolts for them today. I had to run back up there and get it. I got up there just in time, I guess, because, well, they had almost pitched it. So, nice. So now we're gonna put these guys together. These are the bearings. Now one thing that you could do is you could fill this little area inside of here with grease. I would, but these are sealed bearings and I don't really think there's a point in doing that because the grease isn't going to get into the bearings. Now it'll keep water out of it, yes, but at the same time, I really just don't see a point in doing it. So. It's up to you, your call, but this is just the way that I'm gonna do it. So this is a bearing press. You use these to press bearings into stuff. Bring it over here. We should have it pretty well lined up. We're pushing on that inner race, which I don't wanna do. exactly what I was afraid of and trying to avoid. 
Here's a little brass piece. Oh, look at that. Perfect. That actually works perfectly. That's actually a piece that was made out here in the shop. I always called them doorknobs. I can't remember what they were for. But there we go. That worked good for a, a bearing press, actually. Then one thing I'm going to do that I forgot to mention is this is your spacer. That goes inside of the spindle like that. The spindle shaft is going to go through that. That acts as a spacer, I guess. I can't remember what it is for. That just went in easy. Okay. Nice. That's the cool thing about using your dad's little machine shop as a small engine shop is you can use the parts and stuff he made to help you out with what you're doing, which I think is pretty cool to do. And several times out here where that's come in handy, having that. knowledge and know-how and also oh that's broken. You can do this exact same thing with a hydraulic press. This is easier, at least I think. I've done enough of them over the years to where this comes in handy. Not with this tool though, but I've done them. I did them with sockets and a hammer. So did is I stuck the spindle shaft in the freezer so that'll be easier to put into the bearings. I am going to put some grease on that I think to help it slide in a little easier. about it if you wanted to. You could pull the seal out, pack that up with grease, pack these with grease, although I believe they're already greased, so not really a point in doing that. There we go. There we go, look at that. Those are creased. Or they're bearings. So yeah, cool. So now for our next step. We open up the shop fridge, grab one of our spindles, and this is the way they need to go. And I also need to maneuver that spacer. Perfect. Like that. See? Cool. So now I do that on the others. And like I said before, the deeper side is the one that goes down. That goes into the deck and also where the carriage bolts go on top. This is the side the pulley goes on the more shallow side. So usually the last one is the one that gives you challenge.
Did I say the last one gives you a challenge? My bad. I did it in. Great. Oh well, heh. <laughs> Great. Now occasionally you'll get the problematic one. Which in that case you teach it a lesson. So let's see. That's in. Where's that down here? Cool, it went through. Making sure that's going through the right side, which it is. There we go. Like I said, sometimes they tend to be difficult, but yeah, it turns nice. So let's see about getting the keys stuck in these. This little bastard right here was the one that we just fought with trying to put a thing in it. There must be something. I'm gonna. I have an idea. I'm gonna throw that free. It helped on these. So mostly, except that one. So maybe it'll help on that. <clears throat> you want to be careful. on these. And this pull is rough. Went upstairs and found another pulley. I didn't really like that one. And they go on there like that with this top, the higher part on top. Sometimes they tend to be a pain for whatever reason. Why? I don't know. You gotta be careful with them. You don't want to hurt them. You don't want to mushroom them out, you know. You want it to be. Decent still. There we go. I believe we got it. Nope. Of course not.
try that. Let's see if that goes in any easier now. No. It doesn't go in any easier. There we go, I think we got it. Nope. Hmm. <laughs> we almost got it. If that would have stayed. If it'll go. There we go. So hopefully now. Yes, we got it. Ha! I figured that would do it. So let's make sure that goes all the way around. It does. Cool. Looky there. And it spins. Nope. Now, the reason why they put carriage bolts on there is I'm sure you can see it. You wouldn't be able to fit a normal bolt in there. So that's why they did that. That setup is better, but at the same time it's not. I don't like it because the carriage, the squares, as they get old, they tend to rust and the rust and corrosion eats at them and the corrosion eating at them causes them to get thinner. And then they strip and they start to spin, which I've had that happen before, and yeah, it's not fun. You gotta change them. I wonder if that's the same nut. shaft looks kind of rough. The threads on it look really rough. I wonder if we should swap it out. We may not have a choice. Let's hold off on that one for now. Let's go on ahead and get into the next one. Be a little more careful on it. I don't think that was caused by anything I did. They do get rough over time. Of course, you got to remember this stuff is going into 50 and 60 years old, you know. Let's see, here in a year or two. My round friend is going to be 60 years old. And that's the second oldest tractor I have. Oh, that's the one that we had to fight with. That's why there's a thing in it. So, yeah. You gotta be careful. Playing with some of this old stuff. I don't know if I have a socket that'll fit over that. I might have to use a wrench. No. Damn it. Okay, so I'll have to use a wrench. So then that one we need to figure out the threads. 
I may just have to change out that spindle. I might have another one I can swap that out for. <coughs> Here's the one key that we were having issues with. Does that go in? Please go in. sure this doesn't slide and hit those threads. So once the pulleys are on, pretty much all we have to do is take it over there and stick it in the shell. And when I take it over there, I'll tighten down the nuts. We got to figure this guy out. I'm going to have to Leave it like that since we've got it on there. Let's take these over there and let's get them into that shell. And then we'll go on ahead and get the pulleys tightened on. And with these pressed in there, like how they are, that'll help them from moving around, which is nice. Let's see if we can get this to go in. So, yeah, may as well. Let's go ahead and pull the nuts off of these. What one went where? Draw those holes out another size. Let's try that one. Because I mean, we're hitting right on it. Oh, the 
this one. Let's see if we can get this to go down. Why it didn't want to go down, I don't know. But the other two are down also. Now also. That's down low enough I can put a washer on it. Yeah, it is. I guess once we pull the rest of them down, yeah, that should be. Those two are very quiet. Let's just get the nuts on them for now. We'll pull them down later. You wouldn't even know it's been drilled. I mean, eh, unless you watch the video. Let me get that other one fought with real quick and then we'll bring it over. So here's our last one. Now we gotta get this one put in. Hopefully that one decides to go in and work as it should. But currently, all that we need to do now is tighten down the spindle nuts. That bolt just popped out. That's what I wanted. Cool, that went right on. That one actually went on the easiest compared to every other one. Cool. And that one went right on, so I can just grab the markers. Almost had all three of them like that, and unfortunately, the third one just didn't want to cooperate. So those all should be 9 sixteenths. Head size. So we'll just grab our impact and four inch. 9 sixteenths. Stay in place, so. I would think if I only pull two. Should be able to do that. As long as the bolt doesn't move, which maybe it did. Yeah, we're gonna have to put that one back because I think it sagged.
see how much easier that one went on. I bet you it's somewhere right in front of my face. I don't even see it. Grabbed a sacrificial bolt. Yeah, I could fix that if I have to. Let's try this one. I think this one will work. I hope it does at least. That's cracked. Tight. That one makes noise. That one's good. Why 
Why does that one make noise? Oh, that's right. That's the one that's rubbing because of the pulley slit. Okay. That was a weird noise. Never mind. So now we need to get under figure out what size of them are and tighten down those nuts. Let's try one and an eighth. Let's see what one and an eighth does. sideways. I was afraid of that. That key is still in there and it didn't fall out. That's that one. Hmm. Great. That's the one that had the funny threads. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to use that spell. I might have another one upstairs. I'll have to look. So I got another spindle. Let's go on ahead and get this new spindle stuck in here. And then after we get the new spindle stuck in here and the And go on ahead and try mowing with it, I guess, and see how it goes. back out of here.
that done. So I need to grab the nut because it's still over here.
spins good. I don't hear any problems. Cool. What do you say? We throw it under a tractor. That's the first time I've ever been able to spin that deck. I've had that deck now for the past five years. And I'm just now getting to use it for the first time. Let's throw it under a tractor and let's see how it does. I gotta decide what one I wanna put it under. So I got that deck stuck on the 216. I know that this is one that is pretty common on the channel, but this is the tractor that always starts and runs good for me, so that's why I picked it. Got the deck mounted onto it. I wanna go on in and see if it will start. Well, we already know it's gonna start. I wanna see how that deck does. If the deck kicks on and spins over well, we'll open that door up and drive it out on the pad and throttle it out. If it doesn't, well, we'll pull it apart and figure out why. So let's just go on ahead, start it up, see how it does.
kind of expected it. It wasn't the greatest belt really to begin with. So, deck works good. I can't really complain about it. The uh, belt, as far as I know, is just because it was kind of wore out in the POS. So, that's why that blew out. Uh, I can't really think of any complaints that I have for that tractor or that deck. To be completely honest with you, that is my favorite style of deck. I like that one a lot better than I like the newer four-wheel decks and also the later two-wheel decks. They did make one that looked like the four-wheel deck except for it was a two-wheel deck. I have one on my 208 right now. It's actually the one that came on that 212 I used to have five years ago. I rebuilt that deck five or so years ago and I went back into it here recently and put new bearings in it and uh, that's the one that I would always run on this tractor so running a different deck on it a little bit different but eh, it still does the same it does a job so yeah there you go there wasn't really much to mow I had already mowed it the other day with the home light but I thought why not go on ahead and just try this one out make sure this one works good which it does so I'm pretty content so with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If this is your first time checking out my channel, please consider going down below, hitting that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing. It tells YouTube that you guys like the videos and want to see more. It tells myself the same thing. It helps the channel grow. And also, if you go down there and like the video and also leave me a comment, I like reading comments. I would really appreciate that. Also, liking the video helps the video get around so more people on YouTube who are looking for this type of stuff might stumble upon it. I don't know exactly how it works, but I know that liking videos helps them get around a lot. It helps the channel up actually a lot more than subscribing does. So there you go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. You know, I brought this in and shut it off and I'm sitting here looking at it and I really cannot believe actually how original this deck is. It's original paint. It's got the original decals on it still. They say on them, printed in USA. I mean, you look at them, and they're, they're in pretty good shape. I believe those are the original decals. I do not believe this deck has been painted. This is a 1968 deck, looking at the decals and what it has, and also brass tag, 47-inch deck. But yeah, then you come over here and you look at the other side of it, you can see that decal right there and then if you go up there's the four leg deer you don't see that anymore they discontinued that in 1968 so yeah that's actually a really nice deck my plan for it was I was gonna fix it up and sell it but now I don't know I'm not quite sure I almost thought about putting it under my 68 112 I have and I don't know using it but right now I'm not quite sure so whether it'll stick around or not, I don't know. But yeah, I just couldn't help but notice how original this deck is. So yeah.